Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. For your information, I have a master's degree in the Bible from a Baptist Bible college. I am very familiar with Zionism, dispensational theology, and the pre-trib rapture as taught in Baptist Bible College. As a matter of fact, that's why I went, so I could learn these things. Now, this is going to be a warning for those in the Baptist Church. So let's examine what is Zionism. Well, let's take a look. According to the JewishVirtualLibrary.org, the definition of Zionism is as follows. The term Zionism was coined in 1890 by Nathan Birnbaum. Its general definition means the national movement for the return of the Jewish people to their homeland and resumption of Jewish sovereignty in the land of Israel. Since the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, Zionism has come to include the movement for the development of the State of Israel and the protection of the Jewish nation in Israel through support of the Israeli, I'm sorry, Israel Defense Force. From inception, Zionism advocated tangible as well as spiritual aims. Jews of all persuasions, left, right, religious, and secular, formed the Zionist movement and worked together towards its goals. Disagreements in philosophy have set, led to rifts in the Zionist movement over uh, of the years, and a number of separate forms have emerged, notably political Zionism, religious Zionism, social Zion, socialism, socialist Zionism, and territorial Zionism. So, all right, let's uh, take a look. Now, that's what the Jews call uh, Zionism. But let's face it, people. In 70 AD, the Jews, at the beginning of 70 AD, the Jews had a temple where they were doing sacrifices, animal sacrifices, just like they did in the, the days under uh, Solomon and King David. And they were burning animals as sacrifices for sins. Basically, it is a denial of the work that Jesus did on the cross. So, in 70 AD, at least two, if not three, Roman legions under General Titus came to Jer Jerusalem and put down a rebellion and the temple being was burned. As a matter of fact, in Matthew 24, if you want to read it, Jesus said that there would not be one stone left upon another that would not be thrown down. Well, guess what? That was fulfilled in 70 AD, just like Jesus said it would. Now, the thing is, when the Jews tell you that the Wailing Wall was part of the temple, basically they're telling you that Jesus was a liar in Matthew 24 when he said that not one stone would be left upon another. Now, I ask you, if you're a Christian and a Baptist, who do you believe? Do you believe Jesus or do you believe the Jews? Well, I, just so you know, I believe every word in the King James Bible, just like the dispensational Zionist pre trib rapture Baptists believe. So let's take a look. Matthew 24, verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Ooh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Okay. So, who do we believe? Jesus, when he said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another? Or the Jews who say that the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, and the stones are one upon another? Who do you believe? I mean, personally, I'm going to go with Jesus. But that's just my opinion. And if you're a Baptist and you think the Jews can do no wrong, well, hey, that's up to you. You can believe the Jews. After all, the Jews deny that Jesus is the Messiah. I mean, let's face it. If they acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah, wouldn't they believe him and follow him? But they don't. They deny that he is the Messiah. In the book of Titus, chapter 1, in verse 12, Paul writes the following. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. What does it mean to have a slow belly? I have no idea. Evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. You ever hear um, somebody rebuke somebody for saying something that, you know, is absolute heresy against the Bible? The Bible tells you to do that. Rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Well, then your demon nominational preachers will say, oh, well, that's not love. Oh, yes, it is. Rebuking somebody so sharply when they're not in the faith is love. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Verse 14, listen carefully. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. In other words, don't listen to Jewish fables. When they tell you the wailing wall is part of the temple, no, it's not. Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone upon another that wouldn't be thrown down. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but to them that are defiled and unbelieving, are the Jews unbelieving? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Now remember, this is Paul. This is Paul the Apostle. You know, the guy that was uh, trained as a Jewish rabbi at the feet of Gamaliel? the famous Jewish rabbi. I've read some of Gamaliel's writings. That guy was a scholar. Let me tell you something. This is Paul. Paul was trained as a rabbi. He says, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Okay. How about we read the words of Jesus in John chapter 10? Um, you know... If you don't read your Bible, you're going to be deceived. If you don't believe the words of Jesus, you're going to be deceived. You know, and I know people say that, you know, the, the preachers teach that all you got to do is say a 30-second sinner's prayer and you're eternally sealed and you don't have to worry about nothing. You're going to heaven. Suppose they were lying to you. I mean, after all, they say, just believe in Jesus. Well, let me ask you a question. Do the devils, does Satan believe in Jesus? Absolutely. Are they saved? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, is there more to it than just believing? I mean, do we actually have to have our actions reflect what we supposedly believe? I don't know. So, are the Jews God's chosen people? Well, let's take a look in John 10, verses 23 and 29. And obviously, he's not talking about all of them. Just the particular group that Jesus was talking to at this moment in time. Verse 23, John 10, 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. The Jewish temple. Now, who's going to be in the Jewish temple? Not a bunch of Roman soldiers. I don't think so. Jewish people, right? 
And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews, then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So the Jews are going around about Jesus and they ask him, how, how long are you going to make us to doubt? You know, if you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Oh, you mean when Jesus was raising people from the dead? When he was healing the sick and the lame, healing people and casting out devils, and uh, did I say raising people from the dead? Oh, yeah. I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, what? That sounds very anti-Semitic, doesn't it? How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Hmm. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Are you his sheep? Do you hear his voice? Do you follow him? Jesus said, I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But Jesus said, Ye believe not to the, these unbelieving Jews. And he says they were not of his sheep. So, I thought they were God's chosen people. So either somebody's lying or Jesus is lying. You have a choice. Which one do you pick? Well, Paul said, pay no heed to Jewish fables. Right? Matter of fact, if you're a Christian, read the King James Bible, John chapters 8, chapters 9, and chapters 10 that I just read. Matter of fact... Let's take a look at John chapter 8 and verse 44. You will never hear this preached in a Baptist church. Absolutely never. You will never hear this. Jesus speaking in John 8, 44 in the King James Bible, Jesus said to a group of people, we're going to find out who they are. Ye are of your father the devil, that sounds very evil, coming from the words of Jesus, doesn't it? He's calling them, he's saying they're of their father, the devil. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not? Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye hear them, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews. Then answered the Jews. Then answered the Jews. It's pretty obvious who Jesus was talking to and calling of their father the devil, isn't it? These are the chosen people? Really? I mean, don't don't believe me. Read 
read what um, read your own Bible. Do you know in Revelation chapter two in verse nine, Jesus said, speaking to the church, he said, "I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan." Another verse you'll never hear in a demon nominational church. Do you know I've had so-called Baptists, when I quote these words of Jesus in the Bible, they call it hate speech or anti-Semitic or anti-Israel. What? Calling the words of Jesus anti-Semitic? Well, of course. Guess what? The Jews say that Jesus was the greatest anti-Semite that ever lived. He was the most evil, vile, anti-Semitic person that ever lived because he was a false messiah and he tried to lead Israel, the Jews, astray. Now, how could a Christian call the words of Jesus hate speech or anti-Semitic? I mean, well, what is the definition of an antichrist? 1 John chapter uh, 2, verse 22, tells you, gives you the definition, Bible definition of an antichrist. And I read, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. So if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, okay, so who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Well, guess what? All the Jews deny that Jesus is the Christ. And that makes them Antichrist. And if you don't believe me, call any synagogue and ask them if Jesus is the Messiah. And when you deny the Son, you're denying the Father that sent the Son. It says, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if Jews don't accept Jesus as their Messiah, then who is their Messiah? The other guy? Satan? I mean, okay, so, so that's Zionism. Now, dispensational... So that's that's Zionism. Should we actually support Jews that actually hate Jesus, that deny him as the Christ, that call him all kinds of horrible things? It says that he cast out devils by the power of the Satan, which is the unpardonable sin, by the way. Should we support them? Well, I know dispensational theology will tell you, well, this verse doesn't belong to the church. This was for the Jews. And that's their favorite thing. Anytime you have a Bible verse that will prove you right and prove them wrong, they'll just explain it away. Well, that's dispensational. You know, you, you've got to slice the Bible up into these little time periods and say, well, this verse applies to this time period, but it no longer applies today. This verse applies to that time period. Um, this verse applies to this time period, and by the time you're done, you've made the word of God of none effect. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 19, and verse 2, there was a good king named Jehoshaphat, and he was going to help fight for King Ahab. You've heard of Ahab and Jezebel. They were very evil. God hated, they hated God, and God hated them. Well, King Jehoshaphat was the king of Jerusalem. And King Ahab was the king of Samaria. And this is something else they won't tell you. King Ahab was the king of Israel in Samaria. King Jehoshaphat was king of Judah in Jerusalem. What? Israel and Judah had different kings and different capitals? Yeah, they did. Oh, wait, I was never taught that in Bible college or in church. Well, of course not. They don't want you to know. 
you start asking too many questions. Second Chronicles 19, verse 2. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, a seer back in the Old Testament days was basically, that was the word for a prophet back in the old days. Because they could see the future. That was what they called them, the seer. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat was the good king of Judah, Jerusalem. And he asked him this thing, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Good question. So Jehoshaphat was going to help King Ahab and Jezebel in their battle against the, uh, I think it was the Assyrians, or the Assyrians, I forget which one. So he asked him, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Wow. So this seer, this prophet, told the good king and asked him, Should you help the ungodly and love those that hate the Lord? And therefore God's wrath was upon him. Well, does this apply today? Should we help and love those that hate Jesus, the Lord? Do the lo Jews love Jesus? No, absolutely not. If they did, they would believe and follow him. Jews hate Jesus as a false messiah. And if you don't believe me, look up Y-E-S-H-U, Yeshu. You ever wonder why uh, Messianic so-called Jews call him Yeshua? Look up Y-E-S-H-U in a Jewish encyclopedia. It's pretty obvious. You'll read about his father Joseph, his mother Miriam, Mary, about how uh, Pilate crucified him, how he did false miracles by the power of Satan. Uh, yeah. In the book of Amos, so should we help those and love those that hate Jesus, the Lord? In Amos 3.3, 3, the Bible says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can you bless the Jews that hate Jesus? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Is Jesus Christ Lord? I say he is. Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. In 2 John chapter 1 and verse 10, John says, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine of Jesus Christ. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. In other words, God bless you. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of, of his evil deeds. Huh. You know, in Matthew 15, I'm going to skip around a little bit, but you could read Matthew 15 and, and show that I'm not pulling verses out of context. The Jews came to Jesus, Matthew 15, verse 2, and they said, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders. Tradition. God hates tradition. I don't care if it's Jews or Catholics. God hates tradition. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, is there anything wrong wrong with eating, you know, washing your hands before you eat bread? No, absolutely not. Verse 3. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Skip down to verse 6. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. And if you want to read a second account, you can read Mark 7, verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, often, eat not, holding the tra tradition of the elders. Verse 5, Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, 
Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Jesus speaking to them in verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject, ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradi tradition. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Paul writes in Corinthians 2 and verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. In 1 Corinthians 16, verse 22, now the word anathema means cursed. Remember that. It's a Greek word. It means cursed. We read, Paul writes, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Do the Jews love Jesus Christ? If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, cursed. In Luke 19, 27, Jesus speaking, But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Hmm. Do the Jews want Jesus to reign over them? Think about that. In Jeremiah 4 and verse 10, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem. Well, who lives in Jerusalem, people? Surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. Ezekiel 14 and verse 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, ah. So let me let me let me start over. In Ezekiel 14, 19. is will answer the question does the lord deceive people who dishonor him well let's read this and if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing i the lord have deceived that prophet i the lord have deceived that prophet and i will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people israel Do you know that God deceives the prophets? It's right there in Ezekiel 14, verse 9. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Why? Why does the Lord deceive prophets? Because they dishonor him. And Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you know that dispensational Zionist pre-trib rapture Baptist churches teach that this is not true? That the Jews have another gospel? Really? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, is do the Jews have another back door to get in without Jesus or is Jesus a liar take your pick John 10 verse 1 verily verily I say unto you he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way the same as a thief and a robber but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep verse 7 then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. Is there another back door for the Jews? I don't think so. 
Now, dispensational theology. So we, we just, I think Jesus puts the nail in the coffin for Zionism. But what about dispensational theology? You know, basically they'll tell you that the Old Testament doesn't belong to the church. That's for the Jews. And, you know, they'll basically tell you anything before math, uh, Acts 2.38 belongs to the Jews. So, I don't know. Matter of fact, when you... You'll find out that they'll teach that after the pre-trib rapture, before the tribulation, that to be saved, the Jews are going to have to keep the law. Well, how can they keep the law without the rebuilding of the temple? In other words, not faith in Jesus, but they're going to have to do animal sacrifice. So they're going to have to believe in Jesus and do animal sacrifice. Isn't that another gospel? Isn't that another gospel? Isn't dispensational theology another gospel? Now remember, I went to a Baptist Bible college. I took a course in dispensational theology. An entire class. I know exactly what they teach. They teach that in the tribulation period, they'll have to keep the law to be saved. Not faith in Christ. Well, both. Faith in Christ and keep the law.